talk to you quickly about the Braco server variables. Well, there you are, and here you wonder. So uh, let's jump on in, and uh, I'll take a look and show you what it is. So uh, I have this very basic uh, dashboard package that I'm building at the minute. You can see I've got a, a custom dashboard here uh, with a button and some other debug information at the minute. So when I click this button, it makes a call to uh, an API controller that I've created. And in this case, it's going to Embraco back office API, my package, and then ping. Uh, I click OK, and the data comes back, and it tells me what the data in the response is back. In this case, it's Pong. Right. So with that being said, so here's my uh, uh, package controller, or the controller that is being called from my uh, client side. And we can just take a look at uh, the controller, JavaScript controller, or the Angular controller for the, the HTML dashboard. So here you can see um, I've hard coded a URL uh, to Embraco back office API my package ping. Um, but the problem is, what if a user of my package was to change the Embraco back office to be called admin or something else? Then this is not going to work, is it? This is then going to implode and, and break. However, we can solve this problem with Embraco server variables. So uh, let's take a look and see what that looks like. So when I'm logged into the back office, and if I have um, the browser developer tools open, and I go to console and I start typing Embraco and then dot, you can see I've got a, another object inside here called sys or SYS and I can tab to complete and then I do dot and then server variables and we'll tab to complete and hit enter you can see I get a JSON object back and let's just make this a little bigger so we got some uh, insights so in here we've got things like the application we can know what the version is uh, running what the cache burster is uh, things like also in here we have Embraco URLs so these are the URLs that the Umbraco back office controllers are calling for um, creating content and bits and pieces like that. So what I suggest uh, is to use uh, server variables passing notification in version nine. Um, it was an event previously in previous versions of Umbraco, so it's, it's not a new concept. Um, but we are able to add our own key into this collection of Umbraco URLs and uh, that way we can reference it from our JavaScript uh, Angular controller in the dashboard and make sure that we're always using the correct URL uh, for the back office or for our controller. So let's uh, go and take a look at that. So I have, uh, rather than you watch me code today, I have created a, a notification handler or a new class that inherits an I notification handler and then takes in the type of the notification that we want to listen for, in this case, a server variables passing notification. And then I've got some code in here. So let's uh, stop this and then we can uh, uncomment it. So it has uh, one method that we need to implement on the interface, which is called handle. And then we're doing stuff with our notification. So let's uncomment this and we can loosely talk about what's going on. There we go. So perfect. So on the notification uh, uh, itself, we need to get the server variables, which is a dictionary, which is that string object uh, that we saw in the developer Chrome or developer browser tools. In here, we're then just checking, does the server variables have uh, Umbraco URLs uh, in it? If so, or if not, obviously, then throw some exceptions. Also then checking it, is it a dictionary? Uh, if, if not, then obviously throw again. Uh, but here is the most interesting one. Uh, so we're injecting a link generator, and this is coming from Microsoft ASP.NET Core.Routing. Um, so this is not anything specific to Embraco. So we're injecting that into our constructor using dependency injection. And then in down here, I'm then doing link generator, and then we've the Embraco uh, source code or the Embraco uh, code 
has an extension method called get umbraco api service base url and we give it the type of our controller that we want to try and figure out what the url to this controller is so in my case uh, my controller is this my package controller where i've got this umbraco authorized api controller that has one method on it which is ping with a http get um, so if we just go back so hence that's the type that's my type of controller and then here i'm then just saying uh, i need to yeah call one specific method on my controller for it to determine what the base url is going to be um, so that's not going to be uh, the full url so that won't include the url to the method uh, slash ping on the end uh, so it will figure out the url such as uh, obviously without an attribute uh, it would be in Rocco back office API my package and ping and then if I use the plugin control attribute above then obviously this changes the URL and we're going to try that in a second um, just to show that this is obviously would break um, that's a good point actually let's uh, go off and do that so let's um, oh. let's uncomment this so now the root to get to hit to my uh, API controller has now changed uh, as you can see and now with my hard-coded uh, JavaScript that's going to implode isn't it but let's just test the theory just to make sure I'm gonna run my site wait for Visual Studio to do its thing and warm up there we go right and then if we refresh clicking the button now still says it wants to go to Embraco back office API and my package ping but now we're going to get a 404 because obviously uh, the route has changed and this is obviously in this scenario it was to replicate me not having to change the Embraco back office uh, URL changing it to admin or anything like that um, so you can see if if the route was to change then ha having a hard-coded URL uh, in my JavaScript uh, is not an ideal approach so with the code that we've added um, we should in, in broco.sys.server variables dot uh, urls let's open that and then in here i have to remind myself what we actually called it the key uh, so the key that we added it against is called my package base URL. So let's go and look for that. This is where you could do with them being, oh, they are alphabetically sorted. Here we go, my package base URL. So it's now changed to Embraco back office, my Embraco package, my package, and then obviously minus the ping. So, and obviously, uh, using notification handlers, you obviously need to register them. Um, in my case, I'm doing it as a package. I've just used a, uh, a composer, and then the composer is using um, an extension method that I've created um, that is appending the, the notification handler to the collection so of the Iron Brocco builder. So, this is how we would need to do it. So you need to manually call this builder add notification handler in your startup code. Um, or if you're creating a package similar to like this, then obviously you'll probably use the similar approach of a, a composer and an extension method uh, that actually is adding all the services and notification handlers and bits and pieces that you're needed to make your package work. Right, so let's try and fix this up. So, I could do this and call that JavaScript object. So in Braco.sys.server variables dot URLs my package base URL. Um, however, that's not gonna work. Um, let's try it though, and just to verify.
Refresh. So it hasn't updated here. Okay, maybe I've got some cached JavaScript. We'll wait and see. Okay, well, I know for a fact it would have failed uh, just because it's, we can verify, can't we? So the Brocco dot sys dot server. If I could learn to spell today, server variables uh, and Brocco not plugins, URLs. All of these is kind of the base URL to the controller, not to each specific uh, method on the controller. So obviously my method on the controller is called ping. Uh, obviously I'd need to append that. Um, I could do it and hard code it uh, and obviously append ping. That's one way I could do it. Um, another way um, is, is this is how the, the Imbroco, um source code uses it. So we inject the umb request helper in our Angular JavaScript controller here. And then we do the following. Let me just copy in here. So we can use the Imbraco request helper and then we say get API URL and then we just give it the key in that collection rather than having to go call .server variables .broco urls my package base URL. This is a little bit neater and shorter. So we're just saying go and get me the, the base URL from that collection or that JavaScript object and then this is the method that I want to call. Um, so ping or whatever, whatever method uh, it may be called. So this is how we would fix it. So let's save that. Let's do a rebuild because it didn't look like it copied my JavaScript assets over correctly. Da, 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 da. Copy in free files, perfect. Right, uh, let's start the site. So you could use Imbroco server variables um, passing notification to add anything to that JavaScript object. You may want to add specific configuration for your package. Maybe, um, yeah, you need to send certain things um, to be pre-configured when it does that first initial load. Maybe there's some options or some configuration. You could set that in that JavaScript object and then obviously read that from uh, your JavaScript. So let's see if this works now. So I click me as button. You can see we've got the updated URL. Perfect. Click it again and I get my Pong back. Perfect. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's just go back and recap. So for this to work, I'm using a notification handler that is implementing or using the notification of server variables passing notification. Then um, this is mostly just checking code um, just to see if we've got certain keys in our dictionary just so that we can append uh, in the correct location. And then we're using the link generator from Microsoft, ASP.NET Core.Routing. And then using our extension method from the Imbroco CMS code base of get Imbroco API service base URL. We pass it our controller, our controller, um, and a, a one any method on that controller. Uh, in, I, in my case, I've only got one method, and then that will determine the base URL for us. And then I've obviously just set it as a key in the object. So that's it. That's server variables. Um, hopefully, you found that useful. Happy hacking, and until next time, I'll see you around. Bye.